Time's up. Let's do this. Wop 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to episode 218 of Born to be Wild, a wild and wild adjacent Hearthstone podcast where we have fun, hang out with friends, talking about the wild and wild adjacent formats of Hearthstone and spotlighting members of the wild community. I am your host, Hydralisk. It is great to be back on this beautiful Friday evening in the greater Vancouver area. I'm joined by my fellow host, Electric Sheep City. Meowdy. And Schmoopy Daddy! Uh, happy to be back contributing to the pod. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. We record this podcast live every Friday evening at twitch.tv slash born to be wild HS. And the video version of this podcast is then posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. Audio versions are also distributed to all of the podcast applications. So however you are watching, listening, or absorbing via osmosis this podcast today, thank you. Yes, you. you. Content plug, Shumi Daddy. Before we get to the main topic of the show tonight, I'd like to say a quick thank you to the patrons of our show. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and comment on this video on YouTube. Another simple way to support the show is to leave a review on your podcast platform of choice. If you're watching live on Twitch, we've got some awesome emotes that you can unlock by subscribing to the channel. This is free if you use Amazon Prime. Finally, if you'd like to support the show financially, you can join our Patreon for as little as $1 per month. We have some channels in the Discord that are unlocked by subscribing to the Patreon where you can see the show coming together each week. Check it out. If you'd like to interact with us personally, please join our Discord, a free and amazing online community of friends all across the world who love talking about wild hearthstone links to all of this stuff and more including our merch can be found on our website which is www.borntobewildhs.com sheep how was your week my week was pretty good um I had a lot of work stuff going on um had this like big external review uh, where our, like funding agency was coming to do like a compliance review type thing on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I was the main point of contact for our organization. So that was like, you know, no pressure. It went well. So that was a good thing. But, you know, there was a lot, a lot of work, work going into that stuff and things. Um, on the Hearthstone side of stuff and things, I hit Legend in Wild this past week yeah. with Pirate Demon Hunter. So I, I stole this deck from a recent video from one Schmoopy Daddy and um, proceeded to... Um, I can't recall what, what my last count was whenever I was on a desktop um, because I played like on desktop and mobile, but it was like... 20 something and like six wow 20 something and like eight something like that um nice. Decent it was right. it was like Decent 80 right. something percent you know whenever it said percentage two so it was you know Both definitely <laughs> not to be toxic but <laughs> low for a while <laughs> um this was actually the first time that i hit legend with demon hunter in wild i've cool. done it in standard before but i've now hit legend with every single class in the wild format of hearthstone in standard i've hit legend with every class except for mage i have not done it done the deed with mage oh. in standard yet yeah interesting if i realized what was going to come with this um mini set i would have waited and done it this month with mage because <laughs> big spell mage would have like sword but i actually did it with pirate demon hunter and standard is earlier 
before the mini set hit oh, nice. as well. <laughs> So, you know, it's kind of had pirate demon hunter on the brain whenever I, I was watching this uh, recent video that Shmoopy put out, which we'll, I, I think we'll probably talk a- about a little bit uh, later with some, you know, good decks that are that are going on. And this was kind of one that I I mean, I like to play pirates. I like to play pirate demon hunter in standard. This one kind of has our wild pirate demon hunter flair to that same same deck so it was a blast got there with that thing yeah yeah hydra <laughs> how was your week my friend <laughs> it was also interesting or not you could you could say either uh, <laughs> so like work wise uh you were talking about you've got a bunch of review stuff coming up and everything and it's actually like our ISO audit season. And previously, when I was in the quality department, a lot of that used to lay on me, which I'm not anymore because um, I'm bossy Hydra in another department. And it's so funny. I had nothing to do other than get like my department's ducks in a row. And I already did that like back in December last year, like that I knew the things that I would need to do audit wise, like paperwork wise, paper trail wise, um, QC checks wise, getting stamps and signatures times two on everything that we do, that kind of thing. Like I got all our records straight, make sure they're easily accessible, all that stuff. Like I did it at this point. Like eight months ago, nine months ago. Months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Check. So, done. Yeah. So when the auditor came to visit our department, it was like, yep, yeah, here we go. Here's everything. And they spent less time with me than they did with anybody else. It was great. So nice. Yeah, that was cool. That was definitely cool. So don't need to worry about it. When you are in quality, you're almost responsible for, for making sure everybody has all their ducks in a row. And so yeah. that was a lot more stressful when I was over there. And since I'm not anymore, I just had my one thing to worry about. And yeah, it went off. It went pretty good. So, I mean, actually, so that was our internal audit. So what we do, we have an external audit as well. So we like hire somebody to come and pretend mm. that they're doing our official audit. And they do that, and then they let you know anything that you need to straighten out before you have your, like, real one. So you kind of, like, pay to have it done twice, right? One sort of, mm-hmm. like, a trial version, and then we've got the other one. So, so we still have, have like the... three audits. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, we the real one's still coming after, but it's going to be the exact same thing, just done by a different company, that kind of thing. Yeah. So all is good so far with that. That's pretty good. And then uh, book-wise... I said that I was close to 28. I was at 27 last week. I did nail down that 28th book and I'm reading simultaneously my 29th and 30th. So I am currently doing for my 29th book is Stephen King's secret window, secret garden. You've probably seen the movie secret window with Johnny Depp. You stole and it is my very story. different from just Secret Garden. It is not Secret yeah. Garden. I think we talked about how that was going <laughs> to yep. be my next one last week, right? So I'm uh-huh. like half halfway through it at this point in time, and it's so far completely identical. Like there's nice. there's like nothing different. Like it, mm-hmm. it's word for word. Whoever directed that movie, I'd have to go back and look or made the screenplay. It is yeah. So far, everything is completely identical. Nothing has changed. Uh, Good maybe. job, screenplay adapter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in, in all honesty, yeah. The, the, <laughs> For the real. fans, the fans of the book would not be disappointed uh, because same thing. Yep. Um, and then for my thirtieth book, I had started the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So I had done Tom Sawyer before. Oh, I'm nice. on Huckleberry Finn now, and so far having a great time. Um, I feel like just through general pop culture, I know some of the story and and whatnot, but uh, Mm -hmm. it's a fun time so far. Enjoying that as well. Uh, Huckleberry Finn rafting with his buddy Jim going through all these adventures. 
It's uh, it's it's a good time between those two. And then fantasy football. I'm somehow winning. It's early in the season, but two and zero oh so far, and blown both my opponents out of the water so far. My desk is glass, so I can't knock on any wood right now, unfortunately. Hold on, hardwood floor. You could use your head. <laughs> I'll use my I'll do it for you. Blockhead, right? Um, so, so far, so good. We'll see how this week goes. And then, but the important one that I've been working on is that workout routine. And yeah. I am now at 17 days in a row, nonstop. Nice. So nice. I am aware that burnout is definitely a thing. So I, in my head, it's like, if I know it's burnout going too hard, too fast in the beginning is my opponent. I can counteract it. Who knows if that's going to be effective or not, but 17 days in a row so far. Of, it's more than two. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's a minimum. That's awesome. Of. So like cardio wise, it's a minimum of like a 500 calorie burn cardio session each day, but it's between 500 and a thousand calories per day because I do my, my walks in my, my bike. Right. Yeah. It's so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's going really well and just going to keep doing it. I dread it. You like, trust me because I do, I do it midday and then I do it <laughs> after work. And then sometimes I do like a pre work workout, which is like with weights and stuff. But when I'm mm -hmm. done work and I hop on the bike, like last week, I did it right before the show for an hour. Today, I didn't. I only did my lunch hour workout uh, because it's it's a whole different world. Sheep, you were hosting last week, right? So mm -hmm. I was like, I have to do nothing. I'm going to work out before the show. Then I just have to show up, right? Uh, but this week, I had to get the stream going and stuff. So uh, ain't nobody yep. got time for that, I guess. <laughs> so... Going good, going strong. And then tomorrow, unfortunately, when I wake up, it's happening again, back on the bike first thing in the morning. So, yeah, yeah, super stoked. Going to keep that going. And then Sheep already touched on this, but, yeah, Pirate Demon Hunter's fun. Um, I don't have any idea what my record with it is because I've been playing it on my phone in bed, mm -hmm. and I don't, I have not been tracking it. But uh, as... Like someone who played like odd demon hunter and stuff like that. And I played, I had some fun with it and whatnot. And I haven't played a lot of demon hunter in a long time. And this is cool because I can get, I can jam quick, fast games with the class. I need to get the wins anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love pirates. So everything works out and I get to play some, I had no idea how many demon hunter skins that I actually own. It's probably a lot there are some good point. ones too <laughs> there are some good uh, ones yeah i had no idea i was like oh let's pick which skin it's so funny i you would think that you would pick the pirate one but there's like a gunslinger one yeah and i was like no, yeah well i Gun have to be gunslinger is the one that i did too <laughs> i have to be rolling um that's a well, dark tower well, reference was yours like gunslinger Arana or was it like a, a Kurtris or an Illidan that was a gunslinger? Because Arana is the one that I I went with. But Oh my gosh, I, I'm going to have to go back and check which one. I don't think it was Arana. Uh, I'll go probably back and check probably which Probably the Kurtris one. Yeah, that makes There's more a Kurtris sense. one that's pretty good. Yeah. Nice. And I was like, that's my guy. Nice. That's my hero right there. Could it be gunslinger? A pirate was too obvious, right? You picked the pirate hero skin it's a pirate deck i mean everyone Just knows this what you're playing down. anybody anyways <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it could be yeah no well it could be quest line uh demon hunter which that's true which does afford you a slightly different a slightly different tempo so yeah you're not wrong anyway that's been my week basically so far i'm excited tomorrow saturday is basically been my my big day where i mostly get to jam the game so excited for tomorrow and my mini Hydra is off on a trip right now, and I'm super jealous. But that does give me the chance to be a nerd and play video games. So I don't have to be a father tomorrow, and I can I can play video games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shmoopy Daddy, speaking of fathers, how was your week? 
Week's pretty good right now. Um, you know, I, I'm not getting a ton of workouts in, but what's kind of cool is like t- sort of tangentially, since I'm coaching Schmoopy in his little like in-house soccer league, um, I am running around like dribbling a ball, you know, getting sweaty, doing silly stuff with the kids, and largely it's a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, Schmoopy is my most challenging player to coach. Because, like, usually when we're having practice, it's, like, way after his medicine's worn off. So he just wants to kick a ball as far as he physically can and then sprint after it and then dive on it with his hands. And that's, like, <laughs> that's like fine and all if, like, we're just, like, on our yard all, all alone by ourselves. But, like, if you're dealing with, like, other kids are there. Uh, like, my wife fractured her th- femur when somebody rolled up on the side of her leg the wrong way. And, like, uh, they're kids. They're more flexible. Yikes. Like. Like, it, 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 but it can happen, especially because he's like bigger than basically everyone else. So like when he goes down and he's rolling, I'm like, dude, you, you can seriously hurt somebody. So, um, you know, trying to coach that out of him, trying to like not lose my patience because like, you know, he's the only, he's the only kid who has like the gall to talk back to me. Cause it's my kid. Of course, we're on the field. He's like, well, you know. Okay, now we're going to work on inside and outside of the foot. I'm not going to do it because I told you I'm not going to do stuff that I'm not good at. And I'm like, you little son of a... So, like, it's like, it's a weird, it's a weird sort of, like, uh, ch- extra challenge where it's like you're trying to entertain, you're trying to entertain and improve uh, a whole host of little ones that aren't yours and then yours is being a pain in the butt. But, like, we're figuring it out. And at the end of practice, we usually have some, like cool time we there's usually some times where we get to like sort of just sort of hang out one-on-one and that's been special and kind of cool and he's been kicking butt in first grade so like we're 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 in a good spot there on the on the schmoopy trials um i don't usually go into much more of my week but this has sort of been a fun sort of aside um i found a wasp's nest on my property uh it's not close to my house but it is close to my driveway so if we're walking down the driveway all right. If we're walking down the driveway, um, and you can hardly see it in the picture unless you sort of focus in, but imagine you go up the tree, the right side of the tree, if you're looking at the pictures on the YouTube, uh, and you'll start to see the hint of one. It's about the size of a basketball. Like I said, it's I about three it. meters. It's about three meters up because, like, you know, that makes sense to most people in the world. And uh, and uh, I, I, I see the hornets, and... Um, you know, they're not really bothering anything. They're not really bothering me. I think they've been chewing up my swing set, which is made of wood, and the when the and the swing set is looking like less and less finished. So I think they're chewing on that. So uh, you know, what are some ways that you could tell people that you're a wild player um, by mentioning something you do in real life? Well, I've been real throwing rocks at the hornet's nest, uh, little by little, a couple every day. Uh, you know, I'll miss and get close to it and like, I'll see them pour out and they'll be like, Whoo, who was that? And I'll be calmly walking away from it roughly like 12, 14, 15 meters away. Uh, I have smoked it once or twice. I put a wall, I, there's a walnut embedded in it now. Uh, <laughs> cause I was grabbing walnuts off the, we have a lot of walnut trees that, that, or that, that drop their walnuts on my driveway. So I gathered up the walnuts into like a giant pile to be hucking at this this wasp nest every day. And my squirrels, who I, at some time I'm going to have to like share pictures of places my squirrels hide nuts. Because I swear I have the <laughs> single stupidest squirrels on the planet on my property. They Nutty. hide their nuts in they hide their nuts in plain sight. Like I've had them like on my on my deck railing. There's no covering. It's open <laughs> to the air. <laughs> I'm like I'm like what? Hi- surely this, that hiding no spot shot is the this nuts. Is gonna, yeah, it's like it's like it's not shielded from the wind, the rain, from nothing. This is not going to stick around. Like, even the squirrels know you're an honorary Canadian. That you're too nice to steal them. Sure, uh, sure. See, the problem is though, I left a I left a pile of like of walnuts to huck at this wasp nest, and uh, I went back, and the damn squirrels ate all my nuts in like overnight. So like, I needed to go start fishing for more rocks. I have a stone driveway, so I got I got no wait, I got no wait, shortage wait, wait, of wait, rocks. Wait, 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 You razzed me on the squirrel eating my food at the campsite, and you didn't expect yes. if you left nuts out that the squirrel was gonna eat those. Well, I didn't expect him to find them that quickly. Also, it's not <laughs> like I left out people food, so like I don't know. Anyway, 
I, I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to train the squirrels. These squirrels are untrainable. They're too damn stupid. They're leaving stuff like on the underside of my deck. They're leaving them out like wide open. Like okay, nice job. You got under the deck, guys. But I can I'm standing here. I can clearly see it. So um, you you say yes. that they are too stupid. I think that you are not trying to train the squirrels anymore because mm. you already tried and failed. Because they were too stupid, and that's how you know. This is this is my personal headcanon, by the way. Sure, that that works for me. Anyway, uh, long story <laughs> short, I'm throwing. Long story short, I'm throwing rocks at a uh, rocks at a hornet's nest, like a like a true wild player. Uh, and uh, slowly but surely, I'm just sort of going to annoy them until it's you know freezing out, and then I'm probably going to take a baseball bat to their house, and they can uh, they can figure it out from there. They're not going to be moving too good when it's a below freezing, so that's kind of the uh, what I'm waiting for before I make my big move. Um, aside from that, in a Hearthstone, please take video. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, aside <laughs> from that, in Hearthstone. Um, we finally got a VS report. Uh, not VS report. Excuse me. I wish we got a we got a tempo storm report and TS. Uh, a TS. And we finally got like an efficient sort of like picture of the meta. And so I spent some time breaking that down. And I've spent most of my streams this week playing meta decks, which is sort of a nice refreshing change of pace from um, the Crestline Cash Cow Penflinger Hunter that Sheep sent me. That I Which miraculously one? got a win. Okay, but they gave up for no reason. Like, I well, not no reason. I think they probably were going to have a tough time, but like, they saw what I was doing and were just sort of mildly annoyed and left. Like, I don't, I don't know what was going <laughs> on. I, I have won multiple games with that deck. You, I, I'm surprised you've sleeved it up to play it. Uh, that's insane. And what with the combo with like yeah. the, the, the ping, the pen coin, flinger, ping, yeah, ping, the, the exact. Uh, <laughs> the, I, I did the combo for. <laughs> fuel <laughs> yep. hey loser wasn't hey, loser. me hey loser hey, wasn't loser. me hey, and oh, uh man. even actually used a pin flinger ping on an unkilly axe as well nutty. like nutty look check at that. it yep. pen flinger's back all right craft your cash cows and gold <laughs> dust off your quest lines we got a meta deck here boys um, and like, you know, we'll, we'll do like Tier a seven. greater, yeah, we'll do a greater breakdown of the meta later, but what, um, you know, there is like a variety of stuff that you can kind of play right now. If you ignore playing stuff that insta loses to charge druid when you queue into it. So like we are having a little bit of fun right now and goofing off and I'm playing the meta decks and the meta decks all kind of feel okay. And uh, even some off-meta stuff, like, I I'm I'm serious. I think you're going to see even Shaman on a meta report. Um, not too long to the distant future. Not too long in the distant future. It, it 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 It's one of the decks that, like, I queue up now, and I play, and I get wins with it. And I'm like, there's no shot. This is back, right? And by back, I mean maybe it's, like, a high-tier 3, low-tier 2 deck. But, like, I don't know. We'll talk about it later as to why I think it might be back. It's, yeah... I guess we can't talk about that too much, but I, I do want to say I had one of those hero power quests and I was like, even, even Shaman? shaman's yeah. a really good way to do that. So I queued it up to do that thing. And I was winning mm -hmm. and I'm like, ah, hmm. still not yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. It's still not bad. And like, you know, you throw it into, you throw it into like the other aggro mirrors that are in the meta right now. And it's like, okay. And, and does fine there. And if you throw it into a charge druid, it's like, okay. It does aggro throw it things into, to the charge like, druid. Cool. <laughs> you throw it into like the, the, the Renathal piles. Like, you know, it does even shaman stuff. If you give it too much time to build up and you're not racing it down. And like, there's the only thing that really eats its lunch is probably, um, you know, there aren't a lot of Odin warriors and combo priest is getting more and more popular. And, and again, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that later, but like it has bad matchups, but like there's a lot of stuff that it is also facing that are just, it's just kind of like, yeah, it eats right, those things. That, that seems fine. I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to eat it. Um, so uh, <laughs> what is in the news this week? What are we doing? Welcome to the news. The news is so good. Well, we missed it, but it happened yesterday. International Talk Like a Pirate Day was 
uh, September 19th. And I miss it every single year. I Well, and <laughs> Hearthstone still makes pirate emotes for all of the new skins. Yeah. Despite our g- good friend Ben Hearthstone uh, points out uh, not recognizing the day or letting you hear those voice lines since 2017. I played me some wild yesterday. I did not hear any of the pirate voice lines, and that's because they haven't been in in the actual game for a while, even though they are still recording them. So, for example, Ragnaros the Fire Lord actually has one that is, will burn ye ships to cinders, ye scabby sea bass. (laughs) It's recorded. You you, you can hear it on, like, Hearth SFX, but, yeah, they, they, they don't say I'm live anymore that's a really interesting one from ragnaros too i haven't i I love it they um, paid someone to record do you think do you think do you think there's just like uh this sounds dumb do you think there's just like a sheet that they print out for voice actors where like once they figured out what the line like some like somebody sits down and types out okay this situation he says this this situation he says this this situation he says this and like one of the lines they just keep forgetting to remove is the pirate one and so like the <laughs> voice actor there. records it it's just on there it's like i don't know they've this got a with template all the time <laughs> yeah they got like a template and they never changed the template so they're just like ah we've been using this since 2017 teen teen and like that's that's just it. I don't know. They've been using it since before 2017, even because that's just the last time they used the pirate ones in game. Yeah, that's when they stopped. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's when they like, stopped doing it. <laughs> like nuts, hey? It's been seven years. <laughs> that's wild. Well, also wild is the uh, new shop offerings <laughs> coming. Uh, <laughs> to a shop in game near you um diamond dream planner zephyrus was in a bundle for six thousand rune stones usd that's 60 bucks um there was also a halveria demon hunter skin so that's 1000 rune stones or 10 bucks usd and then there was also a lanithal lanithal uh death knight skin also 10 bucks or 1,000 of those rune stones. Um, the Zephyrus bundle had a, a bit of controversy because it was, you know, $60 and only available with the two um, signature cards. That 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 is what the controversy was. There it is. I- yeah, I saw I saw people Legendary, upset. at least. Yeah. I saw people uh, upset that they, they're just like, well, I already have the signature cards. I'm not getting the diamonds at for 60 bucks. And it's just like, very brave of you. Very brave of you. Um, <laughs> these are these are crazy. Like the, the prices are very pricey. I didn't get I didn't get the diamonds F. I and I didn't get I didn't get either skin either. Um but like people Hell, were yeah. looking at it and being like Man, I mean, I, I'm sure I have seen Diamonds F's, but uh, yeah, no, not for me this time. So that that's kind of our, our news. It's a bit of a shorter news week this week, which makes sense. We haven't yet hit a, a balance update. We we haven't, you know, the mini set just came out last week. So the, the meta is still developing. Um, they're doing post meta or post um, mini set release stuff makes complete sense so schmoopy you mentioned that one of the things that's kind of been developing as the metal's been set meta has been settling is that there's been a new tempo storm wild meta snapshot what what exactly are we seeing in this snapshot that that really makes it noteworthy for us to spotlight tonight sure so um just sort of do a little like tldr um nhl writes the forward did a nice job 
Um, the top of the meta is pretty diverse, and like the meta as a whole is very diverse. That the meta actually has <laughs> at the moment six tier one decks as you could categorize them two aggro two control and like a little bit of combo as well mm -hmm. um so we've got pirate demon hunter miracle priest lion hunter egg hunter it's no longer who on hunter because we can't run who on anymore um spell damage druid which is a deck I have seen banging around for at least a month as far as low-level experimentation and um, a list that has changed by maybe four or five cards. It's kind of just like, let, let's, let's use the spell damage package from standard. Let's use some of our wild armor-gaining tools. Let's use our wild heart guff and let's Ooh, just sort street of trickster. Nuke. Yeah, and let's use street trickster and let's nuke opponent from uh from orbit. I really like running an invitation courier in the ETC and a concierge in the main deck so that my mm -hmm. uh my chalices are zero and my concierge is going to get me Every time I, I spend the first drink, I'm going to get two second drinks. Every time I spend second drink, I'm going to get two last drinks. And so, like, the, the, the burn sort of starts multiplying in a very crazy way from there. But, I mean, it, it, there's so much gas in the deck. There's so much survivability. It does very well into aggro. does fine into slower stuff. As long as, like, you know, your opponent's not running a geist or something like that. And uh, which wild players would never do that ever. <laughs> and uh, but it's it, it's it's very solid. It's very very solid. Uh, I mentioned Egg Hunter, Spell Damage <laughs> Druid, the two pirate decks, and Hostage Mage. Hostage Mage is our last one, which again is use a lot utilizing your typical mage stall tools and copying them over and over and over. So like you know multiple ice blocks, multiple alibis. Uh, Sleet Skater, Potion with Alibi up, you know, all the fun stuff into a Romath that is ultimately repeating Light Show from the mm -hmm. ETC. And every time you play a Romath, the Light Show ends up scaling up. So the first one does two beams. The second one does three beams. The third one does four beams. I have nuked a Carriel with the immovable object up. Uh, I believe it's with eight Romaths. Gets them down pretty low in that case. So, yeah. You, you remember that that uh, game, gosh, two, three weeks ago that I was, you know, went through almost play by play as much as I could with where I was the hostage mage against the um, Lion Cracker Druid. Light show yeah. was one of the things in my row math that oh, was right, scaling right. up alongside the wildfire nice. alongside. You got him too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I actually defeated a line cracker druid post line cracker. Like they it, conceded, it do... but it's because I had put them in checkmate. I had the, I had the damage. You had it going. Did yeah. you have, um, it's funny too. Cause we're now cutting like the wildfire. I, I, I had suspected because I'd seen people take the wildfire line like, oh, let me like ramp up my hero power and make my hero power deal like deal like four on turn two. It's cause this is great. And I, I always see those people lose. And so I was wondering, well, wonder what if like the hero power package is bait and the wildfire is bait. And so people started cutting the wildfires. Um, I basically took Corbett's list. He was running like two objections and a second a copy of Ancient Mysteries. I don't mm -hmm. like my ancient mysteries grabbing not ice block. That right. bugs me. So I I cut the objections. I cut an ancient mysteries, and I personally added a mess maker and two resident sleepers. So now mm -hmm. you're talking about um, it's resident sleeper, right? The 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 orc that like he's sleepy on the chair, and you break him as a taunt. He's a three five taunt, and you break him, and then everything gets summoning sickness, and it falls asleep again. Um, oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's basically like another Frost Nova for a lot of board-based aggro. They don't really have a good way of getting around him. So, uh, yeah, you just, you know, board lock your opponent and freeze him in place and put up more alibis and gain more armor. armor and, ooh, yeah, it's great. 
Um, so like it's a diverse meta and tier two is huge too. I'm not going to go through all the decks that are in tier three and tier three is even wider. So like for all intents and purposes, it's kind of like on the surface, uh, a pretty healthy meta. Uh, the only thing that was also mentioned in the Tempo Storm report is they were a little bit, they were a little bit, um, I guess, I guess the proper emotion in the wild community right now is dismayed. We're a little dismayed that Sorcerer's Apprentice was nerfed for some reason. And Ice Block was left alone. Maybe because uh, mm -hmm. Sorcerer's Apprentice mm -hmm. is an easier fix than Ice Block is what is theorized. But really, like, you know, it's not that Hostage Mage always needs block. Uh, I've made this point before. If you alibi and then start gaining armor, um, it, 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 like, there are times I'm, I'm there playing the game and I say to myself, do I want another copy of block when my block's never going to pop? Or do I want like another Nova, do I want another alibi? Um, so I like, face tanked 500 damage so that I could play an ice block from my hand to get yeah. hand space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And hand space is the real evil. Hand space is the real evil in that deck too. And so yeah. like every block that you're holding that you're never playing it, exactly, it's a dead spot. And like you need Romath not to fizzle and you might have a rewind for whatever reason in your Romath and you have to keep that in mind too and um, you know just like like you know your best card is volume up but volume up puts four cards in your hands and if you mm -hmm. don't play a card if you do not play a card between turn one and turn four you're always milling a card if you're going to play volume up on curve so like I'm 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 constantly tossing out like pupils that don't give me a spell like it's just hand space management is a nightmare in that deck um, to your point. And so, and so like, it, it, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that it's a tier one deck. It'd be fine if it was a tier three deck, but like the fact that it can so efficiently take care of other decks is like a little disturbing. And why um, one of the reasons why it's so good and it's hold and it's standing on a leg Um why why it's standing untouched is a little bit you know it's leaving some people miffed because we did ask for if anything block to go and block can be discovered through one of the zephyrus payoffs so yeah. i've seen some speculation um somewhere in the community that that's one reason you know that maybe because they wanted to have like Honestly, if that's the only way that you could get access to ice block was through something that couldn't consistently generate it, it wouldn't be a problem. But that's not how we get access to it in our format. We just run it no. in our deck. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> No, and that's I think <laughs> that's like, the that's, problem. <laughs> yeah, and we can we can discover it off of stuff. We can conjure mm -hmm. it from stuff. We can copy it very easily. But even mad so, scientists like, with just block into it's not, <laughs> it's not really just block either. Like I, I like yes, I think block would go a long way because like there are some games where like you get the mm -hmm. hostage mage low and they have to change blocks. Um, <laughs> and block is the only thing that's going to get there. And, and Romath constantly generating a block is the only thing that's going to do it. Um, but sometimes, you know, Alibi feels just as bad to play against, if not worse. And I've heard people say that before. And mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're playing against, if you're playing Kingsbane or Odin Warrior and your opponent is repeating solid alibis, you're just not winning. Um, it's just not going to happen. Um, so like, but I, I don't at know, least someone with... does on the other. At least with solid alibi, if you get them down to one, you can finish Push the through. job. Yeah. That's right? True. Yeah. Yeah. It's and not an I, inevitability game state. But you can but you can, you know, counterpoint, you can flare block, you can't flare solid alibi. So it's like true. it's like you know, there are people that I get you know, it's it's almost like like which evil are you preferring? And right now the evil I think that most people would like to see go is block. Um, I, I agree with those people. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that the um, the report didn't mention that is like the fly in the ointment for me 
as far as this meta goes, is I still think uh, the Dorian decks are too popular. They're getting mm-hmm. less popular as people realize that um, Charge Druid and Tog Druid are bad decks. They're not. They're very polarized, and they get absolutely nuked by aggro. So the lower down you go in the ladder, the more aggro you see, the less effective they get. Mm-hmm. Higher up, you see more and more of them because I think people are just habitually just sort of they're playing what they would say. Corbett's talked about this before. Oh, you're you're playing more complicated decks because if you're a better player, you find more decision points interesting. Blah 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 blah, and so you see some slower stuff with more decision points. So naturally, what you're going to see is more charge druid. I, I would, I don't care if charge druid is let's say two percent of the meta and they leave it alone because it's a bad deck Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't i don't like seeing it be 40 percent of my games and it's not it's not 40 percent of my games it was like it was for a day one for a minute it was and so it keeps going down right it keeps going down so if it keeps trending down that's fine but i think that's really the one thing that's like sort of sticking out in this meta as something that uh is 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 a little bit like "Mm, we should have this fixed we should have this fixed uh you know lion hunter is also like doing dualsy stuff where it's making zero mana like infinite clears if you have a board with two attack or more minions on the board right like that's Mm -hmm. it's like duels-esque type like messed up behavior in a deck but no one plays lion lion hunter Uh, very, very few people play lion hunter which is very funny because like you can deal almost 400 damage now with Fain Death and Bran and a Cobalt Sand Trooper uh, so and and, and uh, enough lions. Like it's 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 why it's crazy how how much faster that deck got and is, the uh, condition that it plays for now. Is friend of the show Tom Carter playing Egg Hunter Lion Hunter? He is. He Good. still is, and he's he's still refining the list. And I that's actually the list I think they used for the T- Tempo Storm report, and that's the list that I'm currently playing on stream from time to time when I play it. Nice. I think I just edited a video for it, so like in the next couple days I might even push one out. I forget if it's like today or t- well, I don't have anything scheduled for today yet, or AKA tomorrow yet. But I'm gonna push one out very soon because mm-hmm. I've seen a couple people in the community be like. Well, I'd love to play Lion Hunter, but I don't. No one's streaming it. No one's playing it. Like you How know, do? And this is this is, the, yeah, this is the thing with like you know wild streaming shrinking is like there's no you can't just like oh let me just throw on this stream so and so will be playing this. Um, you know, Maxi I <laughs> and I can find out bit. how to play the deck through watching them. Can't do yeah, it I think anymore. Maxi actually used spell damage druid to get rank one in wild. If I if I'm correct, I believe he was playing that mostly. So like people are saying, oh, well, how do I you play spell damage druid? How do I play lion hunter? Um, and kind of mm-hmm. going from there. So like it's not that like because I, I see some people say, well, we, maybe we should do something about lion hunter. But yeah, but like only three percent of the population is actually playing it, and it's a good deck. Like this is like arguably the best deck in the format in lion hunter, and nobody's playing it. Um, but why? I don't know what you're gonna. I, because it's <laughs> Hunter. I don't. I because <laughs> it runs because it runs Meat Wagon and people don't want to craft freaking Meat Wagon. Like I don't. Now what you? That's an I epic, I, I right? Think, yeah, and I, I think I outlined yeah. this. Like you could do some really silly stuff. Like the, now we have Death Lords in the list, so you can do Bran. It's easiest to use the mini version of the egg. Bran mm-hmm. mini egg Death Lord. Have two zero mana lions already. Copy the egg. Copy the death lord with the lions. Trade, trade. I'd probably trade the death lord first and then trade the lion. The lion's going to give you two free lions so you can repeat what you just did. And copying the death lord and popping that lion's going to draw two more minions from the opponent's deck into the field. So essentially, you have an like a like a infinite mill combo that you can just chain over and over and over and over again it just it's just a matter of apm at that point which is a little bit spooky because if it's a matter of apm now you're talking about well now cheaters start thinking about well well, you know if i turn off animations i can mill through my opponent's entire deck i've tried to do it before but but also if if you're running bran and and a a mine or 
uh, Sand Trooper in this case, you, you can stack those too and just well, defeat yeah, your and opponent. That's how you, deal. <laughs> that's yeah, how you that's just how you win deal. the game. <laughs> yeah, that's how you deal like four. That's how you deal four hundred damage if you really want to. If you really want to, um, but like you know, sometimes that doesn't fall in your lap, and so what you really just need is the Bran and the and an egg, and you know maybe you tempo the Death Lord out there, and they haven't broken it yet because it's eight health, and eight health's a lot mm-hmm. still. And you kind of go from there. So like yeah. it's it's funny that it has multiple win conditions. It's funny that it's one of the best decks mm-hmm. in the format, but nobody plays it. Uh, Hostage Mage is a little bit more popular. I want to say like the aggro decks are popular, but they're counterable, right? Like aggro Shadow Priest is still aggro Shadow Priest. By the way, Hosen Roughhouser and aggro Shadow Priest, really good. Um, Pirate Demon Hunter. I'm glad you had success with the list, but uh, that is like a 22 card deck, and whatever's left over is crap. Uh, mistake is uh, probably a mistake. I like the Field of Strifes, but like Field of Strife kind of bad. Ship's Cannon is kind of mid. Uh, yeah, Ship's South- Cannon was kind of mid. South Sea Captain is like only good Cuttable. because it makes the it's it only it's only good because it makes the location and the sigil minions like better. Like it mm-hmm. it's part of what like making like the little one ones suddenly be a little bit more threatening when they do come out. Uh Kurtris Demon Render, like it's great in slow matchups, but like it in faster matchup, it's a dead card. Oh yeah. And it will. It will. Um because mm-hmm. he turns again, it, it's anything that kind of turns a sigil into a pyroblast is like I think okay in this deck. Mm-hmm. Um I, I cut Zilliax personally because it felt like Zilliax was too slow. Let's say I put up a sigil of skydiving and it pops out. Um on curve I can play a South Sea Captain. On curve, my Zilliax costs four and I can't play it. So like right. it felt hella bad. So I'd put, you know, South Seas in there instead. Which I think you you know, you saw to mm-hmm. good effect. Like you know, basically yeah. Sigil of Skydiving into Roughhouser or Sigil of Skydiving into into South Sea Captain is a way of of, of sort of snowballing. And here's the weirdest thing about I think the top end of this meta. And then, you know, you guys that you've seen and you're playing and your your thoughts and your reflections as good an aggro deck as pirate demon hunter is i find it is terrible into other aggro it is it's just not it's a little bit slow it's a little bit dirtily you really need like a really good pirate opener in order to be threatening and one of your best cards is sigil of skydiving and so like you're always keeping that and then like you're hoping you have roughhouse to follow up or south sea to follow up and you can kind of pick on it, but at the same time, it kind of picks on slow stuff. So it, because it has so many ways of making those little waves of one ones into threats, um, some a lot of the slower decks like just run out of ways to reduce the threats or clear the boards, and you just sort of die. I like I that's what it felt like playing thirty Odin against it was like I. I just ran out of gas as the Odin warrior with control and it ran me out of gas, which is where I think 40 Odin ended up overcoming that by now we have a couple extra cards. We can clear a few more boards. We can gain a little bit more armor. We have Geppetto. We can combo two more times. Like it just, it changed everything in the world. Uh, But this deck is Mm kind of uniquely, kind of uniquely placed where into other aggro, it's a little scuffed into anything remotely slower. That's kind of, kind of pick on aggro. It's better. And then you've got Shadow Priest being the aggro deck. And this is where I think even Shaman can like kind of like find a spot. Like even Shaman, I think, eats Pirate DH alive. I gotta I, did you play any even Shaman sheep when you were on your climb? I did. Um actually a decent amount of them. Um so I played against seven shaman and went four and three total. Um, at least for ones that were on um PC. Um I'd say probably about half of those were probably even shaman. And of those, it was probably about 50, 50. So either two and one or one and two, maybe it was two and two. Maybe I played four of them. Um, But I mean, it aggro feels pretty just even with this deck, which yeah. Cleaning cleaning up against the slower things and going 50, 50 into fellow aggro sounds about right like um i played against four priests they were all aggro shadow priests i went two and two 
Yeah. So, <laughs> meanwhile, I went 5-0 and against Warlock and 2-0 and against Warrior. <laughs> like, just yeah, like, yum, yum, yum. Just eat them. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's why, like, okay, yeah, perfect. Like, this great example, this is going to eat the demon seed alive. Because they just don't, like, okay, you defile me once, but now I have locations and sigils and I have things popping up mm-hmm. and I have random burst. Whereas, like, I, I have a tough time recommending this as a day one deck because, like, all you're gonna you're gonna see an outsized percentage of aggro, mm-hmm. and a smaller percentage of the stuff that it really wants to pick on, which would be like Raza Priest, Seedlocks, Reno Shaman, that kind of thing. So like, it, it's it's such a weird, it's such a weird aggro deck, uh, in how it's tuned. That I think if this is one of the better decks, it actually does give like a funny amount of breathing space where it has me thinking like, well, what other non traditional aggro decks are actually kind of like not too slow right now like is a beast druid okay is an aggro druid okay is treant druid okay is even uh paladin does that have legs again like you can start going down the line and that's where i kind of came to even shaman i was just like oh maybe even shaman's okay i think one of the reasons why uh when passage was first nerfed and i still played uh, pirate rogue for the first little bit there almost like like a I don't know three four days afterwards and I I didn't really see much of a dip in my win rate was I could beat something like this right in mm-hmm. in, in like an I agro mirror and because everybody jumped onto something like this and I'm still winning games right uh, I didn't yeah. even have to get to a turn where I had to play passage Obviously, if if that's where I'm relying on it, the card is going to, you know, it's going to whiff, right? Like you play Passage and now everything you get, you don't have enough mana to play. But um, I think I, that's probably where I didn't see my win rate dip was because of that, how this does tend to either fail or go 50-50 into, you know, those other aggro decks. So it seemed to be working. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. I think it's, I think it's still unfavored into, honestly, I think it's unfavored into, into pirate rogue. Even after the passage yeah. nerf, that's my gut feeling. I don't have any data to back that up. Just my own personal experience of me playing this into pirate rogue. It feels bad. It feels worse it feels like the rogues are taking better advantage of the cannons and they've got fillet fighters and stuff that can pick off my minions and prize plunderers and they make better use of the cannons. Whereas like you're only getting cannon values in this deck. Typically if like the cannon sticks and like <laughs> you set a cannon and then you set a sigil or like you, you've put a, a location down on turn four and not triggered it. And then it's cannon, location, hero power, swing face, location again. Like, you have to set up a combo mm-hmm. almost for a later turn. Yeah. And you don't always, if you take that line, it can be a slower line. You can get burned from it. And, like, aggro does a better job of burning you on that. So I will say, I played against two rogues. Both of them were actually aggro pirate rogue. And I went 2-0 and against them. Okay. But that's a very small sample size, and I've played against that deck a lot. Someone, you know, like that's that's the other thing too. And I don't know how good your openers were versus their open. It just felt I don't to recall. me like <laughs> you know, it, it feels to me like day one when you're seeing like a like an outsized amount of pirate rogue because it's like the new poor man's like Murloc shaman. You know how like sometimes they're like those ancient aggro decks that people just refuse to let go and yeah. keep playing them for long after they've been ineffective. I'm still playing um, Pirate Warrior. I'm still playing Pirate Rogue. Like, people say, still play Pirate Rogue and do an okay job with it. Like, I'm sure somebody still hits Legend with Pirate Rogue even after the Passage nerf. It doesn't, it doesn't shock me. Um, but I, I think this is, this is, I think this is unfavored into Pirate Rogue. And so, uh, but like, you know, meta's, meta's good. Meta's very diverse. And, um, that's good. I, uh, yeah, it's good. I think like if I was going to pick a deck right now and I was really interested in climbing, I'd play Miracle Priest because it does so well into – it has a pretty much a neutral matchup except uh, it doesn't really like Hostage Mage, but it can beat Hostage Mage if it's fast enough. 
Uh, but Hostage mm. Mage having infinite blocks, Hostage Mage infinitely freezing your gigantic dude and making armor from it, that's not great. Yeah, it looks like oh, like around 35% into Hostage Mage. Yeah, yeah it's rough. Ouch. Little rough. Little rough. But, but I love the fact that there's a diverse meta. It's, it's so good. And I will say this about Combo Priest, and then I'll really shut up. There's two really <laughs> cool ways you can build it. You can build it one way that people are using now where they're actually using the priest Taurus to use hunter cards. So that allows you to use bird watching and chillin Vol'jin, the priest tourist has an mm -hmm. interesting effect where he can swap the stats of two minions. So the high Great end effect. of the high end of the tourist is like now the deck in theory can do like twice as much damage as it normally does. Now, do you need a 40 40 to have functional wind fury with something else on deck no but like there's going to be situations but who doesn't want important, it <laughs> right there's going to be situations where that's relevant like they've frozen just that one minion that has all the stats and you swap it to something that's not frozen and you find lethal through it like that's that can be useful or i've used it to like swap stats with a big taunt like in the mirror right i'm like all right i'm gonna swap you with another thing and then go for so like that that can actually be decent um and having bird watchings having another copy of protocol and the thing about miracle priest is you need a really disciplined mm -hmm. mulligan you can't just sort of settle for oh these cards look okay you really need like protocol rating elemental in this case bird watching and like you might keep maiden with the coin you might keep handmaiden with the coin because you can kind of get the maiden activated and then you can draw some cards and hopefully you can find a way to get a radiant elemental or find your radiant elemental and go from there. And that's fine. But the bird watching and the protocols in that hunter version are not guaranteed to always hit the radiant elemental, which is why we always structured the old traditional combo priest that I used to take the legend where it's just protocol radiance and the other two minions are shield maiden and horror and whenever you cast protocol you know exactly what you're going to get and it's more consistent so it's like the i feel like the high roll in this new style at this which which is what tempo storm ended up uh showcasing mm -hmm. and raxius in our chat uh she played it up to pretty high rank i think she ended up in like the 200s uh not too many days ago nice. um it's 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 strong. It's effective. It's an alternate way to play it. I suggest if you like Combo Priest, you try it and see which which flavor you like better. I think I'm going back to the original uh, for the consistency because it's like like I don't always need the Chillin' Vol'jin, and I feel like I don't need the um, I don't want the inconsistency in finding my protocols, mm. and I kind of like having Wave Potion which is kind of like just the throwaway last two cards in the combo priest deck. I kind of like having those cards in my deck versus, you know, the way that we've chosen to build the hunter one, but like they're both good. And so like, that was another thing I, I, I showed in my video. It's just like, Hey, it's seven decks. And Dr. Light yelled at me and he's just like, well, I had to, you click baited <laughs> me. Cause I knew we only had six in tier one. So I had to see what the hell you were talking about. And so successful clip bait, you did well. Uh, I have two lists for Miracle Priest, Combo Priest, because like they both work, and it's it's what I would play to Legend. So I also played some Elemental Shaman. Where where is Elemental Shaman on on this this uh this list? Oh, it's now it's nowhere. It's, oh, okay. it's tier tier forty. It's tier forty five. And by tier forty five, I mean I got There's a big a shaman. List. <laughs> And I got a list the on the shaman. stream <laughs> from Azalea. Azalea made one and sent it to me. And they were like, well, I mean, I want to, I won some games with this. And so I want you to play it. And then I was playing it and I was playing. I was like, this feels pretty decent. Like playing elementals on curve, decent bodies with yeah. the, uh, with the I, I went two and burst. One. And like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. Like it's, it's, this is a meta that you can kind of like, yeah, I'll play some Elemental Shaman. I'll probably do all right. Yeah. So, like, eh, you know. Oh, look, I'll get a Scar down. Scar's good. I think I wiped out an even Shaman's board with Scar, and it was just like, okay. Uh -huh. Oh, that was a nice game. Yeah, you yeah. got the mine. You got the, uh, the, the Minecraft cart in there. That thing's busted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Minecraft Cruiser. Minecart Cruiser. Um, 
the arid stormer because if you buff that with the mm -hmm. turbulence either while it's already on board or in your hand or deck then that just gets busted real real quick granite forgeborn just discount all the elementals in your hand oh and you can do it on three if you've played a kindling elemental on two without even using the coin you can yeah. play Kindling Elemental on one coin, <laughs> Granite Forgeborn on two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just and like Granite start Forgeborn, throwing them down. <laughs> Granite Forgeborn is a hell of a card. Uh, yeah. Uh, four mana, four, five, that discounts basically every other card in your deck. Uh, yeah, that thing is nasty. Especially if you can bounce it, which is why I really like the Corrupt the Waters version that runs some more bounces and has a little mm. bit more. But that's more for like a slower, greedier meta if I want to nuke somebody from orbit. That will yeah, no, I, I, I went I went curbs, curve stone yeah, with it. Yeah, you're going like... curve stone, play for board, which is which is yeah. admirable as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Old school way of playing the game. <laughs> well, we, we used to run a, like rock biter weapon and a weapon with wind fury in this deck as a way of having some reach. And we don't have to do that nonsense now because we got scar and we have like unironically, uh -huh. if we want to Calimos and we have, you know, yeah, we have ways of, 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 and we have lamp lighters. Like we have ways of just sort of like bopping from hand if we really want to. Mm -hmm. Just saying it, it might be a real thing. Mm hmm. I mean, Elemental Shaman in the past was super fun. Back in the day, it was a thing for quite some Blaze Caller and all that stuff. Well, that was fun. Oh, yeah. Blaze yeah. Caller now is just too expensive for the effect, but still yeah. a super powerful effect. <laughs> I don't know if I. I think that I cut was my so Blaze good. Back in the day. I think I finally cut yeah. Blaze Callers from Calimos OTK. I think I cut them for Lamplighters. I think that was what I did. Um,. No, but uh, I think, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. I guess it was a long ago. Um, <laughs> what was what was the first of the trilogy? Before Stormwind, it was... Barons. Barons? Forged Barons. in the Barons. In Forged in the Barons, we had, uh, we had Galamental Shaman for a hot minute with the Flurgle that was floated, that oh, was yeah. around and floating about because of the Flurgle Tox combo. So we had the two mana Flurgle and the Tox fin, and we had two, Gross. we ran basically, we we ran one Screw ice fishing. Flurgle Tox. We ran one ice fishing, we ran Primal Dungeoneer was the other enabler for the deck, and you mm -hmm. ran like, you ran two nature spells and you're ice fishing, and you were like, okay, if Primal Dungeoneer gets my ice fishing, I'm not drawing an additional card, but you know what? I just tutored my Flurgle Tox combo. That's good enough for me. And uh -huh. then if you got if you got a a nature card, you were getting an elemental and you were keeping your elemental chain going because the elementals were all kind of cheap. So yeah. like it was that I missed that get deck so much. That deck was like quietly that deck was quietly tier one. I watched Keith numbers like wreck with it on stream uh -huh. and then i think i had like an 80 percent win rate with it to legend then the next month i got to play it it was just oh, i missed that deck i still have a golden shaman galacron because of that deck nice galacron times were fun times with rose colored glasses <laughs> with some rose colored <laughs> glasses are you ready for some unrelated advice yeah yeah i think we are Unrelated advice with Schmoopy Daddy. All right, Schmoopy Daddy. Yes. So we were talking a little bit earlier about how you know you're a soccer coach now, right? Um, yes. It, with a bunch of six year olds, that kind of thing. Yes. Now, one thing that I've experienced in in my time as a parent is. Um, six year olds are maniacs, right? They're, they're, they're crazy. They can do anything and you get mm -hmm. mad at them for the, the, the dumbest things. And at this point in time, I've, I've got a child teenager who's in high school. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so they still do stupid things. They're just different, stupid things. Naturally. So now, now what you said that one of your children is actually being coached by yourself along with the other. So you're looking after this team, but one of those kids is yours. Now yes. I want you to paint, I want you to paint me a picture 
if you will, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what happens when uh, Shmoopy 1 and 2 are in high school and you have to be their teacher. Ooh, not going to happen. Let's say we do. Let's say we do, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this because is this I, is it, 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 if this and is when a hypothetical. Yeah. Hypothetical paint me that picture. They so okay, day. so this actually happened for my my department chairperson at a previous district. His son wanted to take AP physics and he was the AP physics teacher. So there so this guy this kid was not going to be able to take this class if he didn't take the class taught by his dad. Right. So so they had to get a waiver. Basically, like like the, the principal had to write off on it and say that it's OK for, you know, you know, after a short interview that 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 the son was going to take the class with the dad and there wasn't going to be any nepotism or anything like that. And the funny thing about it was like, you know, it, you know, it. it <laughs> my, de my, my, de my department chairperson would go home and he'd be like, yeah, and like, you know, my son can ask me any question he wants at any time. And he's like, no, nah, I'm good. And then he won't turn in his homework the next day. And it's like, like, dude, what the hell were you doing last night, man? And it's like, so it was actually kind of like, he was kind of, <laughs> I think, harder on his, he was harder on his son, I think, than like the other students. But like, I don't think in an unfair way, just in kind of like a, like, you're not even like, come on, you got to do a little bit better than that. And that's kind of like, a, it was more like his son, <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to use names if I'm, if I'm really like stammering and stuttering here. <laughs> I'm it's really trying really hard not to dox anyone involved. Uh, his son would, it was not so much him not doing the work because he was a pretty good student, but he wouldn't do, he wouldn't have like perfect quizzes. Like it wasn't like he was taking the class and then getting 90s. He was like a mid to low 80s type kid in the class. And mm -hmm. again, my department chairperson was somebody who moved actually, he got, he got into teaching late. He worked as an engineer in the field uh, for a big company and then just decided like, you know what, I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to, I want to be home with my family more. I want to, mm -hmm. you know, have summers off. I'll get into teaching. And so like he moved fairly quickly up in, um, to a management style type role in the teaching world in part because of this, like, you know, this, this corporate expertise and like, you know, how to manage people and like how to be organized. And so like he would, but, but, you know, he knew his physics. So like, you know, he could teach the upper level physics. And so like, I sort of find myself in a similar situation where I know what Schmoopy is capable of doing if Schmoopy kind of slows down and decides to do it. But also like, he doesn't always want to slow down and do it. And I'm caught between, I'm caught between two instincts. The instinct where it's like, okay, well I can coach him and he can get better. And the instinct of, I have seen so many of my club teammates growing up have their parents living through them and sort mm -hmm. of like the parents staking so much of themselves on the performance of their child and putting extra pressure on their child. And in some cases, the kid was playing the sport kind of like because they had to and not because they wanted to. Yeah. And like, you know, like parents like trash talking players like you know, like teenagers on the other team because they're like so into the contest and me having to go over and tell my parents on my own team to shut up because the ref's going to stop giving us calls. Um, like it's, it's mm. just sort of, I, I have to like, kind of like constantly check in with myself and say, okay, you're not, are you, are you, are you being the overbearing dad? Are you expecting too much? Are your expectations reasonable? Should you be, should you accept a little bit more? I mean, for God's sakes, you got that one kid over there. He's, he's, he's picking the grass, covering his feet, pretending he can't move his feet because it's stuck in the grass and then eating it. Like, should you really be that hard on <laughs> Schmoopy right now that he's just kicking the ball as far as he can and running after it? Yeah, for that one kid who's eating grass, I had to show him. I was like, come here. He's like, what? I'm like, no, just come here. So he comes here. I'm like, you know what that is on the floor? He's like, no. I'm like, that's poop. Do you want to <laughs> eat poop? And the kid's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to eat poop. I'm like, yeah, you don't want to eat poop, right? No, I don't want to eat poop. Okay, stop eating the grass. There's poop on the grass. Hasn't put any more grass in his mouth, at least not consciously. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wiser words have never been spoken. And you heard that 
on Bar to be Wild.